There's a place in your heart, and I know that it is love. And this place could be brighter than tomorrow. And if you really try, you'll find there's no need to cry. In this place, you'll feel there's no hurt or sorrow. There are ways to get there if you care enough for the living. Make a better place, make a little space, heal the world, make it a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying if you care enough for the living, make a better place for you and for for me. Hi everybody, I'm Cheryl Tally Moss and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. In this episode, I'm going to share with you how I'm growing sugarcane in a container. I'm also going to show you how I am transplanting some of my zinnias, sunflowers, and marigold seedlings. I'm going to show you how I receive free wood chips, and I also am going to show you what I made for lunch. Turkey pasta with my homemade and home canned tomato sauce and my spicy sweet peppers that I also can. Okay, let's get started. This was where my compost bin was. I had uh, made up my mind that I was going to move it to the back of the greenhouse. But I started thinking, it's close to my patio door, this side yard, and it's easy for me to come out and throw stuff in it, especially in the winter time. So I'm moving it right back where it was. Yes, sometimes we change our mind and that's exactly what I'm going to do because I never have any problems with rats and mice because I don't put any oil, meat, peanut butter, you know, dairy products, things like that. Cooked bread that has uh, oil or butter in it. I haven't had any problems the whole time that I've been doing this. So if it's not broke, don't fix it. I'm going to shovel up this compost, put it in this container, and you can see here it has holes in the bottom. The, the container only costs a dollar ninety-nine cents. They're not gonna last forever. So my remedy for that is I'm gonna put a couple layers of this paper towel at the bottom and then I'm going to start shoveling that compost up you can see the little white pieces let me zoom in closer so it does have some perlite in it but I'm going to add more I'm out of potty mix so I got to do what I have to do and I've got to get my seedlings planted because I made up my mind I'm not going anywhere because this coronavirus is serious I'm a high risk I'm keeping my little behind, well, I should say my big behind, <laughs> at home. <laughs> I'll be back when I fill the container up. See this real good? I'm trying to get my shadow out of the way. I got my pop compost bin back where it needs to be. I have this compost here. I'm going to divide it uh, between three or four containers and add some more uh, compost and perlite. And let me just swing you right over here. This is a compost uh, that was composting in place. This is where the sugar cane grew last year. I'm going to remove some of it and then I'm going to transplant the sugar cane that I've been growing in my greenhouse all winter into the same container. And I have a little compost here. And I have some compost right here. So my goal today is to clean up this whole area back here. Take my time and spread uh, new wood chips down here. One section at a time is what I'm going to be doing from here on out. Otherwise, I'll just be all over the place. So, I'll be back and I'll show you 
step by step what I'm doing. So here's the large tote that I have prepared for the sugar cane. And now I'm gonna go get the three rectangular containers out of the greenhouse and I'll be right back. Here are the three rectangular containers. And you can see by my label, my marker, that I planted very small cuttings of the sugar cane into these containers on September 30th, 2019. And they've been growing all year or all winter in the greenhouse. So I dug out the center of this and I'm going to just take these out of the pot and put them in and I'll be right back. Okay, I got it out of the pot and I want to show you the root system. They were touching the bottom of those pots, so they're ready to be transplanted. I, uh, I think I only have enough room to put two of these in, two of these containers. I'll give my one to my daughter if she doesn't want it. I'll try to keep it alive until this uh, pandemic is under control, the coronavirus, and I'm able to go to the um, Home Depot or somewhere to get some more potty mix. If not, I can order some online, but I want to wait until things get a little bit better. I do not want to put people at risk, so I'm ordering uh, as less as possible. In fact, I'm not, I haven't ordered anything in a week. So, yeah, I'll come back when it's all done. Now, before I go, let me show you this. You can see the piece that I put in there. That was the sugar cane piece. I could feel it. This shoot right here is growing from it. But you can see I can just slightly get my arm out the way. If I just slightly wiggle this, you can see this whole plant right here moving. And for those of you who want to know why I grow a sugar cane, I don't juice it. I don't do anything. My grandfather did it. It was a wonderful experience for me growing up, and I want to share that with my grandchildren. Last year, the cane didn't get real big. I had put it in a pan over here. I had it over here next to that fence, but it got too much sun, and it started acting crazy around July. So I moved it over here because it was dying back, and it started growing uh, green shoots again. So, yes, um, I think this will be a better spot. And if it doesn't work out, what am I going to do about it? Move it. <laughs> okay, I was able to get two and a half in here. And I left this one. I can always take this and stick it in the ground, too. In the wood chips. Okay, another project is done. All I have to do is just water it in. Ladies and gentlemen, it takes approximately 12 to 18 months for sugarcane to grow depending on your uh, climate and your temperature, your weather. Mine can only grow for a year. I did do a head start in the greenhouse. I'm hoping I can harvest this in September. So that'll give it a complete 12 months, the last of September. Okay. What do you do when you're on lockdown? You make turkey spaghetti with your own pasta sauce. And my meat was splattering on my stove and my own sweet peppers. I'm using an inexpensive box of garden rotini from Wally World. And you can see here it is enriched with tomato and spinach. It only took me 20 minutes to cook the hot and spicy turkey pasta. While my pasta was boiling, I browned my turkey. Then all I did was pop open the jar of my pasta sauce, opened up a jar of my spicy, hot, green, and other color sweet peppers, and I put about two cups of the peppers into the sauce after the turkey was done and just cooked it on low while the pasta was preparing. And all you have to do with the pasta is cook it for 20 minutes, stir it up, you know, constantly so it doesn't stick. Rinse it off with, uh, drain it, rinse it with uh, cool water. Voila, you're done. So I'm going to have this for dinner and lunch and dinner tomorrow too. <laughs> guys it is about 82 degrees the high is going to be 86 i am going to call it quits for a few hours but i want to show you what i did and i'll probably show you the rest of it in my next video 
I added one marigold here because I remember when I grew my okra in buckets before, uh, aphids love okra and ants will farm the aphids because the ants like the sweet substance that aphids excrete. So you'll see a lot of ants crawling up on your okra. Don't be alarmed. It's not the ants that want your okra, it's the aphids. So I put some uh, one marigold here and this afternoon or tomorrow, if I feel like it, I'm gonna put one here, another marigold here and one there. And I planted one zinnia in this pot because it's not that deep, one sunflower and one zinnia in this pot and another sunflower and one zinnia in this pot. And I guess I'll do the wood chips tomorrow. I thought I could do it all, but I gotta keep remembering my age. Okay, guys, that's it for today. I know I, I, know I said this is uh, it for today, but I just had to come out and look at my beans to see if I needed any water on them. And they're coming up nicely. And uh, so I thought I'll show you that. It's pretty warm in here, so I'm gonna turn the fan. Okay, on. guys, I'm done for the day. Got a lot done. Breathing hard. I uh, got all the uh, marigolds in the okra, and I planted two heirloom zinnias here. One here with a marigold. One here with a sunflower. One there we go here with a sunflower. And I did get some wood mulch in these two trees. This is an elderberry. Uh, I believe this is a mulberry. I lost the tag. We'll see. The Meyer lemons are doing real good. Let me go up close. Let me show you. We have lots of lemons. This is a mulberry tree here, a native mulberry tree to Texas, and a plum tree. It's a little baby seedling right there. And we have two uh, Mexican key lines right here. Uh, I don't have the energy to get this all uh, wood mulch, but I'm gonna walk you around and show you what I have as far as wood mulch is concerned. All of this is gonna be covered up with wood mulch. I'll take the old bananas pieces and make banana water out of it uh, right in here I got the uh, uh, sugar cane in so I did a lot today and I'm gonna try to put that one right there in the compost tomorrow but I'm gonna walk over it now and show you my wood chip. okay guys I don't know if you can see how high this is this is about three feet or more of wood chips I would say three feet because that fence privacy fence is six feet and right in the center, I have to get some weeds cleared up right over there. All of this is comfrey. Pawpaw trees are all wakening up in those three containers back there. And apple tree is coming out of dormancy. Here's another apple tree, but I really didn't want to get into that. I just want to show you the wood chips that I have to shove. There's some dandelions I'm growing from seed over there. Asparagus right here that they covered up accidentally. It's made its way through. So when I shovel the wood chips, I'll shovel in that area and maybe I'll get some asparagus next year. And this, this is parsley that was overwintered right there. So I'm gonna dehydrate all that and a little comfrey popping up right, where did I see it? Right here, where that tree is. But anyway, a lot of comfrey back there by the fence. I have some cassava growing in the container. And that is some good rich soil back there because I grew uh, Jerusalem artichokes or some people call them sunchokes. I may put that cassava back there and then I can have some potty mix to uh, grow some stuff in. Here is some milkweed that came back from last year and uh, echinacea over there. And this is, I think it's called Aster. I call it Sweet William. It looks beautiful. The pink flowers. This is a garden bed but I just surrounded it with wood chips and let it blend in and uh, bring pollinators back here. So all of the uh, flowers that I showed you in the uh, containers that I just did, I would strategically place them all around here, you know, where my fruit trees and stuff is so that 
uh, it'll pollinate everything in here. Now I'm gonna do a separate video uh, about all the trees. So I don't wanna get into it right now, but I do see pears on this tree. I saw some apricots up in the front. So I'll take a few trees a day and feature them or every other day. Okay. So if I can get out the way so you can see how beautiful that is right there. I can't wait for the echinacea to come up in the milkweed. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and the like button and share it with your friends. The end. <laughs>